Um, again, my name is Erin McGarrihan. I am with Unicon. Um, I've been with Unicon about 15 years, and I hold two important roles as it pertains to um, Equella within Unicon. The first is that um, I led the project team that actually partnered with Aperio and Pearson to open source the Equella application. And the second is that I'm director of open source support here at Unicon. Um, and so one of the offerings that we'll have around Aquella sort of as we move forward and, and Aquella builds as an open source product and an open source community um, is, you know, the, the commercial support that Unicon is able to provide to our um, customers and subscribers for ongoing support for, for Aquella. All right, uh, Drew, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, you bet. Uh, I'm Drew Wills. Uh, I'm a software architect here at Unicon. Also being with Unicon for around 15 years, just over 15 years. And I was a, a member of the team that helped take Equella uh, open source on behalf of Pearson. Thanks, Drew. Drew's being humble. He's also um, sort of the de facto tech lead for um, the open source support program as well. So he's He's uh, got his hands in, in all things um, open source as well as Aperio. And Chris? Sure. So I'm Chris Beach. I'm a developer at Unicon. I'm working primarily in the open source um, software. Hi, thanks. Um, if you can just make sure that you're on mute. Um, yeah. So, so I'm on uh, Unicon um, and working year. with the Aquila open sourcing project. Um, also um, focused on um, analyzing and helping with the um, the development of Aquila going forward. Okay, um, Kath, we'll we'll let you introduce yourself um, when we move on to um, your agenda item. And right now, I think we'll we'll I'll turn it over to Chris, um, and he's going to talk about where Aquila is at the moment. All right. So as um, probably most of you know. Aquila has uh, transitioned to open source. Um, starting with 6.5, Aquila is now freely available to the community. Um, it has entered the Aperio incubation process, and Aperio is the um, is a supporting entity that is um, that has the Aquila um, you know, the trademarks and whatnot. I mean, Drew will talk about that in a minute. Um, all of the source. For Aquella, the you know Blackboard building blocks and Moodle blocks, um, the documentation, the add-ons are all in GitHub, um, and that link is there. So once the slides are open, you guys will have that that link. Um, the test scripts that um, that were developed when Aquella was a commercial product, and also there are some test scripts developed for 6.5. Um, they are housed in a test link repository, um, and um, and so you guys have access to that. You will need a user account, but we can get you that. Um, community testing for Aquella is currently in progress for 6.5. Uh, 6.5 beta is available. Um, bug fixes are um, being handled now. Um, and so we're just going through that process. Um, and then the Aquella, um, the, any issues that are found and enhancements um, will be and the GitHub issue tracker will be our primary source to um, to drive for that community. All right, go ahead. Next slide, please. Right, and so uh, this next one's going to be for Drew. Yep. Uh, thanks, Chris. I think this next one is me. Uh, I've been asked to talk a little bit about Aperio, Aperio sorry, and also about open source. Uh, so open source software, of course, is uh, you know different from proprietary closed source uh, licensed software. Um, everyone in the community, everyone in the world uh, has access to the source code for an open source project uh, like Equella is now. On the previous slide, I think Chris Beach had a, a URL or at least a reference to uh, the fact that Perio source code is now in GitHub is a very popular location, very popular home for open source software worldwide. Uh, and that's where uh, we place the source code uh, for Equella. The, 
you don't need anyone's permission to run uh, Equella software. You don't need uh, an agreement uh, with anyone. The software is freely available. Uh, normally, the in open source, organizations that run solutions based on open source uh, collaborate together to make the software better, uh, to maintain the software, to apply uh, security patches, uh, to update, uh, modernize the software, uh, you know, as far as the expectations of users, uh, ex expectations around user interfaces and accessibility and, and so forth. Uh, this is the kind of solution, this is the kind of project that uh, Equella is becoming. So what is Aperio? Uh, Aperio? The Aperio Foundation is similar to the Apache Foundation, but more focused on education. It's primarily higher education, uh, but there are some K-12 and other sorts of, of organizations uh, institutions involved as well. The Aperio Foundation uh, is sort of the host organization for a, a large and growing number of open source projects uh, in the neighborhood, neighborhood of several dozen, I'd say. Some of the longest standing Aperio open source projects are things like uPortal. Uh, that's a, a platform that I personally have done a lot of work with. Uh, CAS, or Central Authentication Service, is another one. And then the Sakai LMS is another uh, massive sort of flagship open source uh, project within Aperio. The name Aperio is, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the name Aperio is relatively new. Aperio came together, I want to say, three or four years ago, probably four years ago, based on the merger of uh, JSIG, another organization called JSIG, uh, and the Sakai Foundation. Uh, the formerly JSIG and Sakai, you know, recognized that there was a lot of overlap in community, in adoption, and in culture between the two organizations, and together they formed Perio to you know, be the new home, you know, that were formerly under the two uh, other organizations. So what does Aperio provide? Aperio provides a lot of infrastructure, uh, not, not a lot of, um, it does provide leader, but not a lot of commands, I'll put it that way, not, not a lot of fiats. Uh, projects run uh, essentially independent, independently within Aperio. But Aperio provides a lot of infrastructure. It may, on occasion, it may provide servers or access to issue trackers or wikis or other tools or resources. Uh, it provides uh, legal help and also uh, some assistance with, with marketing and spreading the word. And um, one of my favorite things that Aperio provides, uh, annually there is a conference called Open Aperio where Aperio projects and uh, contributors to Aperio, participants in Aperio, uh, come together and uh, you know, share innovations and talk about what they're working on and collaborate and make plans for the future. Uh, the next one is in Montreal. Uh, I don't have the date in front of me, but it will be, I believe, June of 2018. Great. Uh, Aaron? Yes, thank you very much. Um, for that overview. Uh, taking it back to uh, Chris, if you can just spend a couple of moments talking about, we sort of talked about Aquila uh, and Aperio, and now what does that mean for Aquila and Unicon? Sure, so we can go to the next slide. Thank you. All right, so we've got Aquila, and it's open source now. Um, Unicon is an entity that is able to provide commercial support um, for the software. Um, while it is an open source product. Um, I don't know if we can stress enough that Unicon is a community member of the Aquila open source world and a contributor. However, we nor any other company actually own Aquila as a 6.5. Um, so Pearson owns the 6.4 series, but after it's been open sourced, it's not, it's not really owned, right? I mean, the closest ownership you'll get is the Aperio Foundation, which guides it. 
Um, in that sense, the community drives the roadmap of, uh, of what should be included in terms of new features in Aquella and the direction for the product, as well as uh, prioritization of bug fixes. And now Unicon um, has the um, this offering of open source support. And so subscribers to the open source support um, help to drive Unicon's um, involvement in the Aquila community. Um, and we call that sustaining engineering that we'll talk about a little bit later. And and really the, the driver, and this is happening like Drew is mentioning, another open source um, product like with uPortal, all of the open source enhancements and fixes for Aquila, um, it's ideal that they get contributed back to that GitHub repository. So we are all working together as a global team, a global community to make Aquila the best it can be um, and, and to share the vision of where we want it to go. Um, for communication purposes, um, it's, you know, the Aquila community is, is relatively just getting started, right? I mean, Aquila is out there um, and We've recently been able to have a Perio or have Aquella enter the Perio incubation process. Um, and because of that, we have several vehicles for communication. Um, it's, you know, it, it's kind of going to be organically grown to what is going to really work for the Aquella community. And it really is based on the community's um, desires. Um, there's a website out there that is hosted by a Perio that's up there. There's a Google group, so essentially a forum uh, that I would encourage um, anyone who is interested in Aquella to subscribe to and to participate in. Um, there is a, um, a Perigo Slack channel available. Uh, like we mentioned, there are GitHub, there's a the GitHub issue tracker um, when we get you know, more into the technical details of a specific issue. And then there's also a Twitter account that's um, I believe was the the commercial Twitter account is now has been moved over to support the open source um, part of Aquella, um, and so really just <clears throat> there's a lot of different ways to communicate, and we'll just have to see what the future holds to which ones um, are going to be active with the community. Um, in terms of testing, um, we have um, you know like Drew was saying, it is it's completely free for the community to go and download the Aquila code base, build it yourself, and you can be up and running with Aquila. Um, there is, out on the GitHub releases um, for Aquila, there's also a 6.5 beta evaluation version. So it's several revisions behind what is the latest right now, um, but it would give you a good idea of 6.5 as it stands. Um, if you don't want to install it, we, um, Unicon can provide a test institution on our test cluster. Um, and we can also provide access to the test link test scripts. I um, mean, really, the, the test link access is just, you know, we'll give you a user account, and then you'll have access to all the open source test cases uh, to review. There is, there is limited support for test link and also providing a test institution, so we can give you access to it. Um, but there's just, there's not the resourcing involved for, you know, in-depth Q&A on, on the institutions or you know the the test link test scripts. Um, that being said, Unicon is happy to work with you when you think you found a bug. Um, we can work with you, and then um, you can go ahead and open a GitHub issue, and that will allow the community as a whole uh, to review that issue and possibly retest and hopefully fix it. Um, and then the last thing is it's it's ideal if you use your data when you are testing, right? I mean we. We have our own set of data that we have developed to, um, you know, to help test for various scenarios. Um, but what the, the huge value add for the community testing is that we'll have all different data points and you'll test the, um, the processes and the user scenarios that are important to you. Uh, so Aquella's next release will be a success in your institution. Um, and if you do it before, or if you do it while the, the testing cycle is really um, in, in full swing, there's a greater likelihood that your user scenarios won't have um, bugs or any um, trips, trip ups when, when you want to move it to production. Thanks, Chris.
Okay, so the part that I hope you've all been waiting for. Um, I'm really excited to introduce um, Kat Fitzgerald from Edelec Solutions. Um, she's going to be spending about the next 30 so minutes uh, showcasing the open source version of Aquila and the enhancements um, that have been built into um, 6.5. So Edelex is a company out of Australia uh, with a, a very long history um, with Aquella. They partnered with Unicon um, in the open sourcing of the Aquella product. They are an Aperio commercial affiliate and an Aquella open source contributor. And they provide, like we do in North America, services for New Zealand and Australia um, for, for Aquella customers. So I'm going to Stop sharing here. Turn it over to Kath if you want to introduce yourself and we'll give you the stage. Excellent. Thank you, Erin. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today to um, show you some of the enhancements and new features included in the 6.5 release. Um, it has been a long time coming, but I hope that you'll love what you see today. Um, 6.5 is based around our old um, feature enhancement system that we had which allowed our users to um, add feature requests and vote on them. Um, it is largely around the workflow functionality within Aquella, um, but there are a couple of wonderful um, enhancements that have been made which will benefit um, everybody who uses Aquella. Um, so across the years that we had the Your Aquella um, feature enhancement system, there was one particular request which uh, had garnered the most votes over the years and um, our developers had scratched their heads to try and work out how they could implement that. And it was to reduce the number of clicks when uploading a file during contribution. And um, so we have actually addressed that in 6.5. And I'll go into one of the simple contribution wizards to illustrate what's been done. So on a file attachment control, um, as long as the attachment type of file is enabled, on the, the contribution wizard page itself, you now have the ability to um, directly drag and drop files or click within the drag and drop box to upload files. Um, and that prevents the old way of having to click add a resource and then pick which sort of resource, etc. cetera. Um, so I'll just give you a quick example. So I can drag across files straight away directly onto the contribution wizard um, and I can do multiple files if I want. Um, I'll just put something in here. Um, and you can see that it's uploaded the file there. Um, I could do a couple together, drag them across. And I can also, if I wish to, then go in and edit. So it takes away the fact that you had, <coughs> pardon me, had to work through a sequence of dialogues to finally get to this point during contribution. Um, one last example is a zip file. So you can, um, sorry, I don't know why I did that. Um, just delete these ones because some of my files in there are the same. Okay, so if I drag my zip file across, okay, and then I edit, I can then go in and process this zip file. So I have my options that I had before. So I can choose to select all of these and not show the summary, just like we used to before, except you don't have to work through all the dialogues to get there. And um, so I think that many people will benefit from this, particularly those who do contributions with simple file uploads. Save that one. And I'll also point out that um, this one down here, this file attachment, sorry, I'll just go back into that. The file attachment at the bottom here has not been set up to allow um, attachment types of file. So we don't get the drag and drop box here. So this is our, our old way of doing it where you pick whichever type you wish. 
A couple of other general enhancements that have been added in 6.5, again, through requests from users. Um, uh, in our Manage Resources section, we now have in the filter area, the ability to filter by items with no owner, so that we can easily identify those that no longer have an owner. Um, and additionally, we have a show items with bad URLs, um, which makes it very easy to find those items with bad URLs. And if you wish, you could then use the share option to send that list to someone to um, work through and correct those items. Um, moving on to the workflow enhancements. Um, and for those of you who use Workflow, um, I'm sure that you will love a lot of these features. For those of you who don't at this point, now will never be a better time, there will never be a better time for you to start using Workflow um, as the features that are currently there have been enhanced and we've added new ones. I'll just start with the admin console and my Workflow templates area um, and I'll open up this teaching workflow. Um, so I'm using a, a very simple sequential workflow example, um, but I want to show you that there is now a new um, type of task that you can add to your workflow, and that is a script task. So a script task, I'll just open this one up here. So a script task is a task that will automatically run um, as part of workflow, um, it will have no sort of, no user intervention, no moderators. It is just a, a, ta a script which will run um, after the task prior to it has been completed and it will either finish the workflow or move on to the next task once the script has run. So uh, this uh, feature is only limited by your imagination and your scripting skills and you can probably tell that my scripting skills are very basic and um, so I, I've just set up a script that adds copyright approved at the end of my description but you could write a script to do anything that you want it to do uh, and you can set it anywhere within the workflow um, and there's a notifications tab now you need to you cannot save this without choosing a, um, a user or a group of users to be notified if there is a script error. Um, and you can also choose to be notified if the script successfully executed, although I'm not sure that you'd want to be bombarded with notifications for that. And um, if a script does fail, a notification will be sent to whoever has been set up in here. Um, and they can go in and correct the script and once it's corrected those tasks that were waiting at that script task will then rerun and move on to the next uh, section or the next task within the workflow. Just while I'm in here, any of these tasks, our, our, our workflow tasks, have a priority um, and they can be set to low, normal and high. I just want to point this out because some changes at the front end um, will use that priority to sort things. So I'm going to close that now and I'm going to move to our front end. So I'd like to start with the Manage Tasks page. Um, and I will mention, I won't show you, but I will mention that um, we have created parity across the sort and filter functionality um, over the search pages in Aquella. Um, a lot of them only had a subset of filters that, that could be um, set, but now we've tried to make, provide, um, as I said, parity across all of them, um, which allows for more granular filtering and sorting across each of the pages. Um, we've also changed the design of this page. You'll probably, for those who use the Manage Tasks page often, you'll see that um, we now have a select option for each of the tasks shown in here. Um, and when you, when you do select things in here, and I'll just select a couple of, um, let's do, Law and Ethics, 
Okay, so we now have a number of bulk actions that we can perform in here against a selection of tasks. And the first one I'd like to show you is the assign or reassign to moderator. So this allows an administrator to come into the manage tasks page and assign uh, a specific moderator to um, a selection of tasks. Now this will come in very handy um, in a number of different scenarios. One may be that you might have a subject expert in a particular area and you want to allocate a, uh, that moderator to those particular tasks. Um, another one would be that if you have tasks assigned to a specific moderator and they go on leave or they leave um, the institution, you can reassign them to a different moderator. So I'm going to go and select Joe Bloggs because he knows a lot about law and I'll execute that. And that will assign those particular tasks to Joe Bloggs. Joe Bloggs will get a notification about those tasks, that he's the moderator for those tasks. Um, let me just point out that you can only pick moderators who have been selected on the moderation tab on the te uh, um, as part of that workflow task template. So you can't just pick anybody within the institution. Um, another of the new um, tasks that you can perform against a selection, um, and I'll just pick a couple of other ones here, um, is to bulk approve or bulk reject, reject tasks. Now this um, being used through the manage tasks area will allow an administrator to come in and say, right, I want to move all these tasks on. Um, and it could be for a number of reasons. It could be because um, um, the person who moderates that is away and you just want to get them through. Um, there could be any number of reasons. Um, so we can make a selection and we can choose to approve them. We get the approval message. If I'd selected to reject those tasks, this message would be um, mandatory. So I can say whatever I want here. And this particular message will be stored against across the selection. So for every one of those tasks that you've selected, this message will appear in the workflow comments area um, and in the history of the workflow. Just put in test there, execute. And those tasks are approved and moved on to the next task. And it would be the same if I had selected to reject them. Moving on to the My Tasks page. So if we go up to our tasks area up here, click on that, we get the My Tasks page. Now the My Tasks page has also been redesigned and you can note that we now have a select option as well as the moderate option. I'd also like to talk about some new icons that are showing here and the way that it defaults the sort order. So we have two new icons. This one here is telling me that this task is assigned to me. So I can see straight away that this is a task that is uh, assigned to me. It's not unassigned and it's not assigned to someone else. I can also see the priority is high for this task. So it's showing at the top of all of the tasks I need to do. Now the next one down is a high priority task but it's not assigned to me, so it doesn't have the, the person icon. Um, and all the high priority tasks show at the top of the list. Um, and then further down, you'll see that the normal priority tasks show, and this one is assigned to me, so it's at the top of the normal priority tasks. And then I have the unassigned ones beneath that. And then right at the bottom, if I go to the next page, it will show ones that are assigned to another user, which makes sense because I don't need to see those ones. I can moderate them because I'm in the moderation group, but because they're assigned to someone else, they're showing at the bottom of my list. 
this will make it a lot easier for moderators to work out exactly which ones they need to do and in what order. When it comes to being able to select in the My Tasks page, um, again, there are um, bulk actions which can be performed against a selection of tasks um, by a moderator. So um, again, as I showed you for the Manage Tasks uh, where administrators can bulk, uh, reject or approve tasks, that can also be done by a moderator in the My Tasks page. Um, however, there are new um, permissions to allow that to happen. So you, you may wish moderators to be able to do that or you could not actually grant those permissions to moderators but allow administrators to do it. Or there may be a group of moderators which you may wish to be able to bulk reject or approve tasks. So again, I can make a selection. And you may say, well, why would you be able to select items if you don't have the permissions to bulk execute approving and rejecting? And the other thing that you can now do here is to moderate selected. So you may wish to select a group of tasks and then work through moderating them. And one of the suggestions that we had um, which, well, it's more um, fixing a, a piece of functionality was that when you actually worked through tasks, it was very annoying that you approved a task and then it took you back to the My Tasks page between each one that you wanted to do and you had to select the next one and approve it or reject it and it would go back. So this way we can actually moderate a group of tasks and without having to return to the My Tasks page. So now would be a good time to have a look at our new moderation page, um, which has been um, changed um, to, make, to make it flow more with what you do when you're moderating a task. So we now have the information about the task at the top of the page. Um, it no longer has the black background, which seemed to be quite unpopular. Um, it's much easier to read. Um, and you can see um, the information about um, submitted by, assigned to, and we have the comments. And I will in a moment show you one where there are existing comments to show you how much easier it is to see the comments um, than before. Also note that the approve and reject buttons have been moved underneath the edit resource and view summary. Um, and this is to make sure that um, the flow of the process uh, works more easily. Often part of the moderation is to edit the resource or to view the summary page. Um, it makes sense to have the approve and reject buttons underneath those options. Um, I'll just go into one that I know has comments. So you can see here that it is so much easier to view previous comments than it was before. So we can see that reject comments have the red reddish background and the approved comments have the greenish background. And we can scroll through quite easily and view the history of the comments for this particular resource. And we can easily post a comment if we need to as well. The other thing that we've introduced in 6.5, um, which again was very popular in our feature request system, was the ability that when you are actually uh, approving or rejecting a task, that you can add a, um, an attachment which is only relevant within the workflow itself. So, um, these particular attachments, they can't be viewed on the summary page, they can't be viewed by anybody who's not a moderator within the workflow, um, and they're only designed to be used within the workflow. It might be um, a formatting guide, it might be um, like an example of how someone else set out something. Um, so I'll just go in and show you, so if we go into this one, 
and we choose to approve it or reject it. Approve. Um, please see attached guide. And then I can actually do it the other way. Just open this up and I'll put my style guide in here. Okay, and then when I go back and have a look at that, I can see straight away that there is a link to a guide in here and I can click on that link and open it up and have a look at it within the workflow itself. And there's no limit to the number that can be added. Um, but once the, once the item is live, those particular files can no longer be looked at or opened. Now, the script task that I showed you in the admin console, I'll just um, show you if I moderate this particular item here, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll just do one to show you. So we've got Heart of Darkness. If I moderate this one, the next item, once I approve this, is the script task. So once I approve this, it should show copyright approved. Okay. And let's go down to... There we are. So we see Heart of Darkness and we can see that that script task has run and we've got the copyright approved. A couple of other new um, enhancements that we've added to the workflow area is that, um, the ability to filter by workflow and workflow tasks from the manage resources page, which you couldn't do prior to 6.5. So in here, if we tick only show items in moderation, we now have the filter by workflow drop down and if I pick a particular workflow we also can filter by workflow tasks so I'll just pick one of them okay and we have a new function where you can go in and select a number of tasks or oh, sorry, a number of resources and move them from a particular workflow task within a workflow to a different workflow task within that workflow. So if I select a couple of these and go to perform an action, I now have the ability to reset to workflow task. And this will allow me to pick a different step within the workflow to move these particular items to. So you may wish to skip a step, you may wish to move them back a step. If, for example, um, that, that you weren't happy with the way that the things had been formatted and um, the people who'd approved it didn't realise it was wrong, you could move them all back to a different area within the workflow, put an optional message, um, these need reformatting. And execute, and it will move all of those items to the new step within the workflow. The other option that we've added within Manage Resources is the ability to remove items from workflow. So if I remove this filter, and just take this one, all tasks. Okay, so I've got all these items in workflow at the moment. And for some reason, I want to make these live, take them out of the workflow because people need access to them now and I can't wait for them to go through workflow. So I can perform an action, 
to remove from workflow. And that will take them out of the workflow and make them live immediately. The last thing I'd like to talk about for 6.5 is the notifications, the Aquella notifications. Um, so prior to 6.5, notifications um, shared one language string, which was um, for a subject heading. So all notifications that came out of Aquella had the same subject heading in the email subject. Um, and that was a cause of frustration for many people. Um, and they were not easily, um, or not easy to edit. Uh, in Aquella 6.5, there's been a major overhaul of all the types of notifications that come out of Aquella. And um, there is now a separate language string for each subject, um, each email subject heading, which can actually be edited using the language pack functionality. Um, addition, additional to that, there is uh, the ability to still with um, language pack functionality to change um, the text within the body of the emails that come out through notifications. Um, they have also been changed to HTML um, so that they look prettier. And they also have been overhauled so that the body of each notification has more meaningful information and uh, um, the information is easier to read. And also the subject heading for each notification is more meaningful. And I can just show you a quick example in here. Um, of the new notification subject headings. So you can see here that these um, actually mean something to, to a user who receives these notifications. So uh, for example, resources in a collection you are watching are now live, um, a rejected resource has reached a workflow task allocated to your moderation group. So we can go in and have a look in here. So, and it actually, says the, the workflow step in the subject heading. And it also is um, set out so it's so much easier to read. You can see that you can click on the link of the attachment if there was an attachment uploaded. You can see the rejection reason quite easily um, and you can click to moderate that particular item. And Every one of these um, notifications, as I said, now has um, an easier explanation. Um, and just one other thing that we, we've added into 6.5 is um, basically the definition of, um, of something being assigned to you. So it, it came through as saying, um, uh, workflow items have been assigned to you even if you're in a group of moderators it will no longer do that it will say allocated to your moderation group if you're part of a group of moderators and you can see this one down here if it's been specifically assigned to you for moderation it will tell you that so there's a difference between being part of a moderation group and um, actually being moderated uh, actually um, being assigned to you for moderation. Well, that's it from me for this demonstration. Um, I'm hoping that you're liking what you've seen today. Um, I'll hand back over to Erin now. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Kat. That was awesome. Great. Okay, um, we have a few more minutes. I'm, I'm going to make sure that we uh, uh, use that wisely and, and stick to the to the to the top of the hour here. I'm going to go ahead and get back into um, some additional slides. And and um, just to kind of recap, um, we're moving into a new world here, right? We're moving from Aquila being a proprietary um, software to being in the open source world. So what we've tried to try to hit on a number of different things um, in this meeting, and hopefully you guys can um, 
see my my screen. Um, I'm not looking at the chat anymore, so if someone wants to jump off mute and say yes, that'd be great. Um, but we've tried to give sort of an update. Say that again? It's updating. It's working well. Perfect. Thanks. Um, we've tried to give a state of Aquila as an open source product, which is new, right? This is a new world for everyone. And we hope we've impressed upon everyone the importance of community um, and the importance of getting involved in the Aquila community. If you, if you wish to continue using Aquila, if you wish to keep seeing enhancements and um, driving of a roadmap, these are all things that are going to be driven by the community. Getting involved in the community from a contributor perspective, so again, the code is available. Um, if you have that one special person on your team who you know, wants to learn the code and eventually wants to become a contributor, that's available too. We want to make sure that, that people understand that the evolution of Aquella is now with the community. We also hope that we've given folks a reason to upgrade. So we want to see Aquella continue to grow. We want to see it continue to evolve. That will start with folks starting to upgrade to the 6.5 version. Um, and then hopefully, uh, you know, as we kind of move forward, just touching a little bit on um, how we support folks who are using open source software. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a program called the Open Source uh, support program, which is commercial Unicon support for open source projects. So Chris talked about all of these different communication channels, um, group chat, um, you know, Slack, things like that. Um, when you're moving into using open source software, those are all places you can go to get your questions answered, to work with the experts, to, you know, figure out what's coming up or what may be going wrong. Um, but Again, it's all volunteer, it's all community driven, right? So with the Unicon Open Source Support Program, you're getting our commercial backing for those applications and kind of we, we do that with a number of different um, applications that are shown here on the screen. Um, again, we realize that some folks host Aquella themselves and our open source support offering would be something to support you um, with that model. I did want to mention we have a couple of other offerings as well in terms of a hosting and managed services Aquila offering. And then of course any sort of professional services um, needs that you may have as you embark in this Aquila open source world. Um, but specifically for open source support, again, we're talking about um, guiding you in your Aquila uh, instance in terms of um, how to keep it up and running, if you're having problems with it, if you need hands-on assistance. And as part of that, we talked about this is one of the ways that we're able to continue ongoing development within the Aquella community. So when we have um, subscribers to our open source support program, that is specifically driving the involvement and the development that we do with Aquella. So when we have, uh, when you have specific needs and you're a subscriber to um, the open source support program, um, we're going to look at your requests, your priorities, and that's what's going to drive our involvement in the Aquila community. So I'm just going to turn it over to Chris um, to talk a little bit more about what we call sustaining engineering, which is our um, development um, involvement within the Aquila community. Sure. Thank you, Aaron. <clears throat> so each Unicon subscriber, um, you know, for the open source support um, will increase Unicon sustaining engineering ability, right? So the more subscribers we have, the more opportunity we have to, um, to create enhancements and work on bug fixes. Um, the Unicon subscribers uh, will help prioritize in, uh, the sustaining engineering efforts. So if if there are if there are tickets that are or enhancements that um, subscribers really want, um, this is you know, this is uh, a very real opportunity to now get that into Aquila. Um, in order to do that, the um, the most straightforward way um, would be to open an S5 Zendesk ticket. Um, as a subscriber, you have access to that Zendesk help desk. 
Um, and then um, we will pick up that ticket, we'll review it, we'll see if it's coming up already in another release, um, and if not, um, we'll, we'll help talk about it a bit, and then we will, um, we can open up a GitHub issue and tag it with Unicon SC. Um, it is it is globally um, available for folks to see any GitHub issue, and they can see any tags. Um, so there will be visibility to what Unicon is um, is at least reviewing for and considering for sustaining engineering. Uh, that being said, though, um, anyone can add issues to the GitHub tracker. Um, so please, you know, we don't want it to um, seem like well, you know, you can't can't add issues unless you open a Zendesk ticket. That's not it. But that flow going through S5 will help us track the sustaining engineering priorities better. Uh, next slide, please. So the, um, you know, it's just getting started for, for our subscriber base, um, but we have identified with our current set of subscribers already uh, two issues that we are considering um, for this last quarter of 2017. Um, so those numbers relate to GitHub issue numbers, and when you get the slide deck, you can click on them and it'll take you to that link. Um, 229, we are, this, 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 it's a bug in Aquella where you change resource metadata ACLs and you save the collection and the, and the items don't show the, the change. And so you have to force a, a re-index. Um, and then 377 is an enhancement um, where it's just, you know, to remove one more click out of the Aquella contribution process to make Aquella more attractive for users. Uh, for upcoming events, we have Educon week, um, and then the next quarterly briefing will be around the week of January 15th of next year. And you know, things are continuing to grow and evolve um, around Aquella, so please stay tuned. So I'll take this one. Um, just as we kind of wrap up here, um, some calls to action. Um, we will will certainly uh, make this recording and these slides available and we urge you to go to our website under support um, where you can find those things and I'll probably also do an, an email blast as well. Um, certainly the open source community is getting up off the ground and running um, so thank you for your patience and your involvement as we organically grow this community with some of our partners like Edelac and we start to gel some of the governance and some of the roadmap planning as we move forward. As, as you can tell, we've very much been focused on the open sourcing of the technology and the 6.5 release. Um, we are looking for anyone to get involved in the, the beta testing. Um, in the month uh, now and in the month of November um, and certainly contact um, us or, and my info is right here if you have any questions about um, 6.5, the open source community, anything we've talked about here or certainly any of Unicon offerings as well.